we met at a, at a, he interviewed me for a job. And um, I was a nurse, I was a rehabilitation nurse, and he was a little jealous because I was getting more rehabilitation cases for a competing agency because I was good at it. And he didn't have one like me. So he wanted to meet me to see if he could get the rehab business. And we met. And Ridgeway. Ridge, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We met, and uh, the job interview turned into a several for hour we for event. Dinner. We, met for dinner. <laughs> we got together for dinner and found that we really had a lot in common. And uh, that's how we met. <laughs> he hired me for the job, and I remember saying that I thought I'd rather date this guy than work for him. And he went home and told his brother he would rather date this woman than hire her. My brother, Matt, uh, who was, were, were, was doing the RV with us. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the job interview, he asked me what color my eyes were, too, which was that's, really bad. Yeah, that's a bad. <laughs> but, but then I had a rule, you can't buy this working. So I figured, well, I'll just give up the dating part and just she'll be a good employee. But then she flirted with me for a long time. No, no, no. <laughs> no that's really not exactly how it happened. I that's how it. he likes to tell I the tale. Gave in. No, it was a year but and I found myself it was a year and a half. We, we, a year and a half. I'd worked for him about a year and a half. Yeah. And I found myself as his employee getting invited to all kinds of meetings that my job had nothing to do with. <laughs> and that was kind of a clue there. And then we very discreetly began to date and then we married. Okay. So how long after she started working for you did she finally break down and ask you out? <laughs> <laughs> I think we met December of 80, 88. And we went on the first date in ninety. And he asked me. April out. April of ninety, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I asked her out. Mm -hmm. How how does your how does your working relationship go now? How does it go now? Good. Yeah. Hmm? You mean it like at Bayada Nurses? How do we work together? We work together. Yeah, good. We're on a few of the same committees and work on a few projects together. Mm -hmm. I work pretty independently of him, though I report to him. What I do is this doesn't really enter his little world on an everyday basis. Yeah, but she's handling most of the, the rehabilitation and nursing issues. She has her own re rehabilitation team of nurses. But at night, I have quite a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, really. I get, I get my instructions at night. I'm going to go back and do them in the daytime. Because, <laughs> you know, being out in the offices, I hear lots of things. I have people come and tell me things, or I hear things, and then I have to tell. <laughs> right? Right. See, we work very well together. I think your employees will get it major chuckle out of that. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, on, on a little more serious note, what does it mean to each of you to have the Bayada name on the company and on this work? Hmm. I, I feel it's a lot of responsibility because it's a, everybody, it's a, everybody's work is a reflection on the, our personal name. So it's a greater responsibility and duty to make sure that every client is taking, every client comes first and we take very good care of them. To me, it means him. And he's such a good guy, it makes me cry. <laughs> he's such a good guy, I think, that our employees and our clients need to know him. Because he, he means all this. He does. Not your typical CEO, but. No, no way. Mm -mm. So that's what I think. It's, it's him, it's what he stands for. He's just a good man who means this. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me cry. Mm. Mm. Yeah, our mission is to help people have a, have a safe home life with comfort, independence, and, and dignity, and despite an illness or disability. So everybody wants to be home, everybody wants to be happy, and they may need our help. A lot of clients, most clients, they don't, they don't want our help, but they need our help. And we're there to make their life a little bit better so they can stay close to their family, stay close to their friends. Stay close to their pets if that, that's what it is. So you really have to look at the people and not just the symptom or the diagnosis, correct? Oh, yes. It's, uh, um, they have a, uh, we're taking care of how the people feel about their lives so they feel happier, they feel more greater dignity, they feel respected, they feel comfortable. Um, and the nursing part or the treating their illness or disability is just what we do to make them feel better. I went to a, a hospice training once, and I was, uh, because I helped form the first hospice in this area, and um, I was gonna be a volunteer. So we had a, a doctor that was coming in one week to give us information, and uh, what he uh, told me was, uh, I thought he was gonna speak about medications and pain management, but he was a very kind man, he's known in this area, Dr. Winston, and he said the first thing to remember when you walk up to someone's door 
for a hospice patient is to remember to show love. So I think if that's the first thing to remember is to show love, where you can help a person both inside and also physically. When you go into someone's home, you're on their turf. Uh, nurses are used to, in a hospital setting, taking charge and saying, you know, now we're, you're going to go down for your x-ray now, and now you're going to have your lunch. And now, the nurse is absolutely in charge of everything that goes on in a hospital setting. When you go into home, that's not the case. So you have to kind of set that aside and get to know the client and get to know the family. The, the other piece of it is that home care just doesn't affect the client. We're in there with a whole family of people, and every single person in that family is affected by the person who comes in the door. We very rarely get a call from any client saying, you know, you sent me, she's not a good nurse, or she can't take care of me. That, that's not, they're not the kind of calls. It's more, she just doesn't fit here. She, she's just not the right personality for us. And you kind of have to find the right, the right mix, because I think personality is the most important thing, really. You know, you, you can send a wonderfully skilled nurse to a home, and if she can't tuck away her desire to be in charge and her takeover instinct, she's not going to work out. I guess our primary belief is that our clients come first, which really means you have to put your own ego aside. And you have to be there to help them. Um, they, have, they have a need. They don't really want you there. So you have to, as Ann says, adapt in the home, figure out what their needs are, try to make their life a little better, make a difference so when you walk out, they feel a little better. They don't feel it was a bad experience. And we have uh, three main values that we have. One is compassion. You have to have your heart in the right place. You have to want to help the person, relate to them, make their life better. The second would be excellence. Everything we do, we want to do skillfully, properly, from good nursing care, good financial management, uh, good phone manners. Everything we do, we want to do professionally the best possible. And the third, especially important in home care, is reliability. We have to show up. It's one-on-one, -on -one. somebody has to be at that home to take care of the person so they get their, the care they need to live um, a good life. Some people do this type of work, but they don't have that spirit in them. Well, they're not the ones we're looking for. We're looking for people who have that spirit and want to nurture that spirit so they're a, a better person and can serve others better. And I think it has to start at the top. It has to start with Mark. And then the, the next line would be all the division directors, that they take care of their division in, in, in this way. And that the director of every office feels the way that Mark feels about the Bayada way, because if they don't, it's, it's not going to happen down the end. I, I think I was raised to be a good example. I was the oldest of a large family. And I think in my role now, I have to be a good example. And he is. Believe me, if I'm talking to him at 25 after 8 and he has to go out the door, he is out the door. He will not be late to work, right? Yeah, I don't like to be late to work. <laughs> so I have to be reliable. <laughs> <laughs> so this has a real deep place in your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's my life's work. Calling? Destiny? How would you describe it? Uh, um, I, uh, I think it's a choice. I made a choice to do something that I would feel I was... Uh, making a difference and I think I can do it and I, it's, it's, a, it's a struggle all the time to overcome the obstacles to get everybody pulled together uh, to achieve something special but it's I think it's worth the work and it's great as when other people feel the same as me I feel I get a sense of closeness and good relationships and a connection with others so that's inspiring to me. We need to find the kind of people in the field and in the office too who don't look at it as just a job and at the end of the week they get a check. They have to have that commitment that every phone call, though it could be a very difficult phone call, they have to make the difference. And those people can be hard to find. Um, a, a, lot of, a, a, lot, a lot of people don't function that way, I think. So I, I think the, the better we are at hiring and recruiting in each office, the more likely we'll find the right people in the field. So it's, it's a huge challenge mm -hmm. to find that person who's going to go the extra mile, that, that doesn't mind staying on the phone for another 20 minutes with this really maybe upset conversation or um, upsetting conversation, or the person who doesn't mind having to stay in the home for an extra hour till the next nurse who just had a flat tire can get there. There's all kinds of obstacles that we have to overcome. And the right kind of people will overcome those obstacles. 
Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest challenges is just assembling a group of uh, nurses, aides, um, uh, office people who feel the same and are willing to live out the, the mission, beliefs, and values that we have. Um, and even good people have, will have uh, problems and for some reason can't go to work or can't work at a particular case. Then we quickly, like a fire, um, a fireman when, a, when the alarm goes off, have to jump to and make sure that the problem gets solved so the clients in, in no way have a, a blip in the quality of the service they're receiving. Uh, also, we have financial problems where the, we are re reimbursed by the insurers and the government and um, they, in this day and age, they don't want to give any more money, so we're working on a very tight budget to, and we want to pay the nurses as, and the aides and everyone as much as we can to get really good people, so we're caught in a little bit of a squeeze. You know, when you go into a home and there's a nurse there or a home health aide there, you can tell just by the way the client looks at that nurse and the client looks at that home health aide how, how that aide and how that nurse is. You, you can just tell. It's just that caring that comes through that you can sense. You know that client's happy every day when that nurse gets there or that client's relieved to know that that home health aide is coming back the next day. And it, it's pretty e it's, it's easy to see. It's pretty easy to measure when, you, when you're out in the field. And you know, it's not, any, it's not easy work. When you're in a hospital or you're in a facility and you're a nurse, because I've been a nurse for years, you can, you know, yell down the hall, Mary, come here, I need some help. There's, there's no one to call in home care. You're it. You're it. And it's not easy to, to be a nurse and to try to make a difference on someone else's turf. So the kind of person we have to find is the person who looks at it way beyond a paycheck, who understands what Mark is about, and is willing to go the extra mile. As Ian said, when you encounter someone who is forming this wonderful relationship, has their heart in the right place, wants to help someone else, it really is, you get a sense of satisfaction that all your work came to fruition and you have both the client who's getting the good care but also the nurse or the aide who's feeling good about the work they're doing. Mm -hmm. And they have a nice relationship and it's just, wow, it worked. And so each case, we're always, it's like relationships, you're always trying to make them better, a little better, a little improved, a little more love, a little more support between the two. And when it, when, and when it falls apart, you just have to quickly work to put it, put it back together uh, so people feel connected and supported. I do value our employees. They're our, the service we provide. They're the only thing we offer. So I care about them. I care about them when they're, they're not feeling well or they're having a problem. And I'm very thankful when they're uh, providing wonderful work. And I try to do my best always to make sure that their needs are met and I'm tuned into their feelings and needs also. And I'm connected with them so together we can help take care of our clients. And I know there was something you wanted to... I, I remembered something. Uh, Mark's mom lived with us for years in an apartment above our garage and had home care. We had, obviously, Beata. And we had different home health aides come to our, homes, over, our home over the years. And I can tell you how we knew the right one had come. If you could, I could be downstairs getting ready to go to work or doing the laundry or something, and you would hear Grandmom laughing. And, you know... It was great. She was up there having a good time with the home health aide who was really just there to bathe her and, you know, keep her comfortable for a few hours. That was, that was the sign, right? Yes. If Grandma was laughing. Yes, she liked and if there laugh. was no laughter, you knew that the person that was sent, she might have been a wonderful aide, but she wasn't making the difference for Grandma. Right. I wanted to add that because the laughter was important. For her. You talk about making a difference. What are some of the differences that you recognize without knocking it? competition or other healthcare companies, but what makes this company different? Uh, well, I would have to say it's the people and people who would share the same mission and beliefs and values that we have to really care about the work they do and care about the clients to make sure that they have a better life. To care that the client, if they, like my mother, when she needed care, that she was laughing. Well, good. That's what she needed, companionship and a little happiness in her life. How about you? Well, I think with Bayada, you're not going to have the, the, the you're never going to have a nurse or a home health aide be sent out to perform a procedure or do something that they're not well trained and absolutely competent to perform. And this is risky business. A lot of people can put up a sign and say they're a home care agency and send out just anybody. With Bayada, you'll never have that. You can you can trust that everyone we said that we sent has been 
checked out and trained and oriented and is competent before we send them. I think uh, another difference is that a lot of agencies don't have the nursing supervision that we offer. We have very, very close nursing supervision at, on every single case, and a lot of uh, agencies don't have supervisors. I think the way that makes Bayada nurses different than other providers of home health care is the fact that it starts with the Bayada way. It's a common belief, mission, and values that we share regularly among each other. We recruit to make sure people feel that way. We support and recognize people who have it. And we try to, in, in collectively within ourselves, try to nurture and develop it to a higher level. I think we're a necessary nuisance. It's, an, it's a job where intrusion is part of what you have to do. Um, it's a job where people need you, but don't necessarily enjoy having someone invade their home every day. It's a job where not everyone's going to fit in, in your home. It's a job where uh, we're walking, we're not just taking care of the client who happens to be sick and need our care, we're taking care of everyone else that's in and out of that family and all the issues that are happening in that family as we're there. So I think, in I, I like to say we're a necessary nuisance. And we, we recognize that too. Please understand. We understand it's really intrusive that we're here, but we're going to do the best we can to take care of your son. We're very busy all the time. It's a thousand phone calls, a thousand communications, a thousand things going wrong, little detail, an arrangement here, a time change here, a doctor's appointment that has to be taken care of. And uh, the work we do is very busy, although it's heartfelt. It comes out in a lot of uh, concrete actions that we're taking all day, Very a lot of tasks. So the office is a beehive of activity, making all the arrangements to make sure that everything goes right for a client. A, a change comes in, you have to respond to it immediately. It's a calling? It's a, it's a, yes, the, wor the work is a calling, you have, but you have to have that spirit on the inside that then converts itself to lots of hard work on behalf of the clients and responding and adapting to their needs quickly and professionally. It's also an adventure too, right? It's an adventure and we try to keep, and to do the work daily, we try to keep a sense of humor, a sense of positive spirit, a sense of mu mutual appreciation for each other so we can work as a team in a, in a happy, positive way which then infects each other and hopefully infects the clients too. I also think that we have a lot of heroes and we recognize those heroes better than a lot of other companies do. We have a hero, our heroes uh, project and we have uh, quarterly heroes uh, for each office and for each division, and we have national heroes, and we make, we make a lot of uh, to do about that. It's important. It's important for people to go in doing such a difficult job to be recognized. We appreciate you. We love you for what you're doing for us, right? Yes. Um, uh, our employees, we believe in recognition. They're wonderful people, and they're doing a good job. I want to say thank you. Not everybody can do this work. Not everybody can do this work as well as you. Not everybody can be other directed in, in a, when we're in the me generation. So I, we say thank you and recognize and we'll clap for them and relate to them and show that we really love and appreciate the work they're doing. What, uh, what goals do you have at this point for the company? Well, my, my goals are I've always, I've always been had a big vision. So now our, our current vision is part of this Bayada way. I made it bigger again. We want to help millions and millions of people worldwide. <laughs> That's big. But we're only in 15 states. They don't even know us in California. <laughs> so uh, to go international. But this is uh, not necessarily a big business. It's a lot of people that are caring for a lot of people that want to stay home. The need's worldwide. There's families with someone in their family that needs some help, and they don't have the means to do it, and they need, would need a Bayada nurse. So I'd love to have Bayada nurses in all the states and all the continents. It would be a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm.